iPod touches had just came out and the screen was all the way up. The brightness was all the way up. So I'm going through my phone and as I'm turning a corner and I bump into something, but it's at, it's at my mid thigh and I'm like, what the fuck? And I, and again, the screen is in my face like this and I turn, I, my right hand reaches down and all I feel is fur. Hi guys, welcome back to the Bolt Off with Big Jim podcast. Guess what, motherfucker? Some of the information you are about to hear, some may find disturbing. I don't know who gave them this or who gave them the clearance. On the crotch. Oh my lord. Right there. Can we Google that? Yeah, that's what I thought. And then I oh. fucking stumbled down a dark hole and I love it. Great cake parties. So, you know, I'm going to believe anybody's bullshit. I'm going to believe mine. It sounds... Uh, not politically correct, but you two motherfuckers need Jesus. Yeah. All right. Well, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. And this time, it's just Big Jim and it's just me. So we are your hosts today. Of course, I am Bo, and with me is Big Jim right there. Hansel Jim. I are here. <laughs> he is there. We today... You don't know what the sub what the subject's gonna be, do you? Nope. So we are gonna go through what's known as Cabin Twenty Eight. Isn't that a program? A program? It was on USC, UAMs. Anyway, I thought it was a yeah. It's a real place. Uh, yeah, it's a real place. Oh, all right. Well, I'm. I'm all in. I still I just popped one. Yeah, and I'm popping mine now. There what is that? It's a hard seltzer. Oh. This is a Drake's fifteen hundred. Yeah, that sounds I good. Gonna, I was gonna open a PBR, but I don't know if I'll be able to finish the twenty the big tall can. I mean I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, real quick before we get started, everyone who is listening and or watching, thank you. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Please be sure to leave a five-star review. Uh, also, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share our content on YouTube as well. Now that that's out of the way. Let's There's a get- flow page. We have a flow page that has everything on it. Literally everything. If you go to the Instagram everything. page, flow dot page slash btwbj has everything that we do on there all right here we go here is the gist of it kitty california is known as an extremely small town have you ever heard of kitty california (laughs) all right well it's up in the petalumas mountains way up there or or not petalumas palomas uh, mountains never heard of it it's so small that the population is only 66 people they're all related probably it's a good it's a pretty good sized family <laughs> and uh Cous- cousins loving cousins <laughs> <laughs> back in this was back in the 80s uh a family no who was known as the sharp family they moved uh, from Connecticut to Kitty, California. It was a family of one, two, three, four, five, six, six people. It's a mom and her five children. They left Connecticut from a domestic abuse incident, and um, they ended up in Kitty, California, a really random area to be ending up in, of all places, to be honest. It's still existing? Still existing. All right. So, with that being I'm said, I'm intrigued. Intrigued? I'm intrigued. With that being said, on April 12th at 7:45 a.m., the uh, the second oldest daughter, Sheila, returned to the cabin from a sleepover with one of her friends at a nearby cabin to find her mom, her brother. And her brother's friend brutally murdered. And this case has still been unsolved until today. It's still unsolved. 
What year did this happen? This happened, sir, in 1981. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh huh. All right. So those who are involved is the mom, 36 year old Glenna Sue Sharp, son John, 15 years old, daughter Sheila, 14, daughter Tina, 12. Her other son, Rick, and her other son, Greg. Rick was 10 and Greg was 5. This also involved Rick's friend, Justin Smart, who was 10 years old, and John's friend, Dana Wingate, who was also 14 years old. Okay? I'm following. Now, like I said, Sheila found her mom, her brother, and her brother's friend brutally murdered. Okay. To the point mom, where... Brother, brother, friend. Three of the, them. Three of them. To the point, it, it was so brutal that blood literally covered just about every square inch of the front room. Sheila ran to go check on the others who were uh, in the other rooms. And surprisingly, they were still asleep in the back room. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sheila then ran back to her friend's cabin and told the friend's dad, James, uh, James Seabolt Sr., of what she had found. He told the sleeping kids when they returned back to cabin 28. The, by the way, the sleeping, the sleepover was at cabin 26. So it was two doors down. Okay. Uh, he ran back to the cabin, also saw the bodies, came into the house, and told the kids who were sleeping in the back room, hey, you need to go through, through the window because I don't want you to see what's happening out, uh, up front. James then informed the manager of the Kitty Resort, which was Jane Albin. And at about 8 o'clock in the morning was when the Plumas County Sheriff's Department arrived on scene. Now, to the nitty-gritty. Okay. So for those listening, uh, this is going to get very, very graphic. Take a sip. Here we go. All of the bodies. Uh, that's go. graphic. All of the bodies were bound with wires, zip ties, surgical tape, and black electrical tape. Now, the first person that was seen first by Sheila was her brother, John. Now, don't forget, John was 15 years old at the time of the uh, murder. <clears throat> he was found near the back, near the the front part of the front room. He was on his back and his throat was cut so deep that she could see his neck bone. The carpet displayed a nearly perfect circle around John's head from all of the blood that came out of him. Next to, next to John was Dana. He was face down and Dana's head was brutally bludgeoned from a hammer. A portion of Dana's head was also on the pillow as well, next to him. He was also strangled either before or after being bludgeoned. Now let's move on to the mom, Sue, or Glenna. Her, her real name's Glenna, but everyone referred to her as Sue. I don't, I, I don't know why. It's kind of odd. Uh, like it's not like Richard and Dick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sue was also it's better bound. Than Richard's dick. Richard's dick. That's true. <laughs> Sue was also bound with wires and electrical tape, and she was also gagged with a blue bandana as well as her own underwear. When they found Sue, she was she only had clothing from the waist up. She had no bottoms on, no socks, no underwear, no pants, nothing. What? Yep. It was held, the, the underwear was held inside of her mouth and black electrical tape was wrapped around her head and it was wrapped so tight that it looked like, uh, you, know, you know, like the, uh, like the gimp mask in uh, Pulp yeah. Fiction, mm -hmm. like how his mouth goes like this. If, like if, you, if, if you're listening to this part, I'm pulling my cheeks apart. <laughs> Not his ass cheeks. Not my ass cheeks. Sorry. <laughs> now. What, all, what they also found on her was from the butt of a Daisy Powerline 
uh, 880 rifle that was left that left a mark on the right side of her head. Her throat was also slit, and like I said, she was nude from the waist down. Isn't that a BB gun? Yeah. So they assaulted this family with a BB gun. Mm-hmm. With her, they they did they did one of those uh, yeah. old, those old school movie things where they cock them or pop them right right in the face. Yeah, yeah. And on the autopsy report, you could see where the in, like the the imprint then, was was left on her face. Her hands and feet were tied together in front of her. And each person was stabbed about nine times, if not more. Blood literally, like I said, covered the entire front room from the walls, the sofa, the floor, parts of the kitchen table, uh, parts of the kitchen table. Blood was also on the bottom of Sue's feet and John and Dana's shoes, as well as Tina's bed. Now, four people were technically the victims of this entire thing. That's Sue, John, Glenn, and Tina. And Why we'll, Tina? I'm, I'm about to get to that. Oh, okay. I just got, I, you know, I have to lead, lead you up to uh, it. Well, yeah, well, now I'm curious. Cause that this whole town, it's, it's obviously up north, right? Way Northern up California. north. Way yeah. up north. And I mean, literally, like, I mean, a, a tiny, tiny portion of California, like it, in two, in 2018, the, the census said was at uh, 66 people. And I think Jeez. as of recently, it was 93 people. Counting cows and pigs? Pretty much. And chickens. <laughs> yeah. A couple of ducks. Wow. Now, according to speculation, it appeared that the bodies had actually been moved before they had died. Or after they had died, excuse me. Post-mortem. It looked, post-mortem. So it looked like from what from what it looks like, because there was blood, like I said, on Tina's bed. Tina's bed was in was in the back of the house. And there was blood on the on the bed and blood in the hallway, and then more, all of the blood was in the front room. So a lot of it looked like someone put them over there. Other than the already brutal attacks, it was also believed um, that each person was not only stabbed but shot, but they couldn't they they couldn't find um any bullets but they had they speculated that it was a break uh breaking and entering kind of thing but it was a bb gun wasn't it right well at least that that kind of thing is a bb gun that kind of gun uh head trauma was also caused uh by the by the head of a claw hammer that was near the front door now like i said dana was the one who was bludgeoned he was bludgeoned so bad that the back of his skull was open. Uh, no signs of force entry was discovered, and all the lights were off, and the curtains were drawn, and no phone was plugged in. Now, it's not like a cell phone where they turn off the cell phone, take out the battery if you're able to take out your battery. This is old school phones, the uh, rotor phones, you know? Yeah, so, so landline, land hardwire. Line, they, yeah. uh, they, they were all un- unplugged. Now... What was crazy, like I said, there was no force entry, but what they did find was one bloody fingerprint on a handrail that led up to the uh, cabin. But it was undetermined as to who the fingerprint be- belonged to because uh, uh, it, it didn't look uh, – or it, it, it got ruled out um, as nothing was, was taken from the house. So they just saw a bloody fingerprint, but they, they, they took a photo of it but they couldn't pick anything up from the uh, fingerprint ash or the fingerprint coal, charcoal the thing. The dust. The dust, yeah. Now, a neighboring cabin, this was at uh, cabin 29. I'm sorry, 20, yeah, 29. So this is the, their next door neighbor. They said that they woke up the night of the murders by the, from the sounds of muffling yelling. However, they did not go and investigate. They heard the yelling, thought people were partying, went, went right back to sleep. <laughs> yep. During muffled the party. A muffled party, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, also, this is the 80s, so I'm assuming people 
they thought people were high on coke or you know doing some yeah. party shit. Cocaine and Budweiser <laughs> was the life. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that how uh, Farley died? God, who knows what he had in him? He had Chris a lot. Farley? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Man. those pictures are crazy too. Have you seen those pictures of him? Yeah, uh, those are fucked up. So. Uh, during the investigation, the youngest of the friends that night, John, Justin Smart, had remembered something while under hypnosis. Now, this is after everything was said and done, this specific part. He said, while under hypnosis, he saw two men that was with Sue that night. One had long hair with no facial hair and glasses. The other had short hair, a mustache, and also wore glasses. Now, keep those two in mind. And according to Justin, John and Dana had returned to the cabin that, uh, after a day out that, that day. And, the, and there's a couple of theories, and I'll say them towards the end, okay. as to what they think happened. A composite sketch was, was given to the, to the sheriff's department, and they were able to print, uh, draw up what they thought the guys looked like. Now, here's an interesting and kind of crazy part. The sheriff at that time, who was also a part of that case, did not notify the homicide division of Plumas County. He did not tell his own employees to investigate this. Instead, he had the Sacramento Organized Crime Unit come out and investigate what had happened. And back in the 80s, according to reports from other uh, sources... And also, I will name some of the sources at the end of this. Um, that was in uh, the, the Sacramento Organized Crime Unit and the Sacramento uh, Sheriff's Department was a corrupt department back in the 80s. That's what they were known for. Now, Start, starting to sound like Gypsy Hill murders. Right. Corruption right. all over the place. <laughs> right. Now, like you said, where's little Tina? Yeah, well, how is she affected? Well, besides mentally. Because like I said, there's they only found three bodies in the house. Where's the fourth one? So where's the fourth one? After law enforcement took over the scene, Sheila came to a shocking realization that her sister was not in the house. She wasn't in the room with the kids, and she wasn't in the front room with, with the parents. The sheriffs looked through, through the entire house, tore the house apart, couldn't find Tina. Tina was not there. Now, like I said before... Sheila, her older sister, was at a sleepover at cabin 26. Tina was playing at cabin 25 the night prior until 8 p.m. That was the last time anybody had seen Sheila. After that was, after that was discovered, the FBI came in, and because of a missing person, the FBI came in, and they started to investigate. It took all of three, three years to find Tina. Tina was discovered on April or in April on, uh, of 1948, 40. That seltzer already hitting you a little bit. <laughs> 1984. Now what, what they found, what a person had found and this person remains anonymous to this day Parts of a small skull was discovered near the Butte County, discovered in Butte County, near Feather Falls, just outside of Oroville. And I don't know where any of those are. <laughs> I know where Oroville's at. I've never heard of Butte any County one is. of those. Any one of those. Yeah, that's uh, by Wairika, Cloverdale. Wairika? That's by the border of what is that? No, that's Eureka. Oh, okay. Wairika's inland off the 101. It's basically farmland. Well, according to this, that was 29 miles away from where the Keedy murders took place. That's where she was discovered. Buried? Unburied? Unburied. It was just out in the open. Next to oh, the skull, wow. next to the skull was a child's blanket, blue nylon jacket, a pair of jeans, and an empty, and, and here's where it gets tied in, an empty surgical tape. The jawbone and other small bones were found near the body as well. The skull was sent to a lab, and it was definitely confirmed to have been and belonged to Tina Sharp. 
So they kidnapped her. I I think three. Yeah, I think what had happened was they kidnapped her because she probably woke up in the middle of whatever happened and um and saw what happened so they kidnapped the uh the uh, little girl. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go take a little step back real quick and again it's going to get a little graphic. And I'm also going to put some, some, not all, of the crime scene photos on our Instagram page. So please be sure to check those out. I know I'm, I'm watching the time too. Oh, I'm not uh, tripping. Um, the, the hammer was not the only thing that was found. Like I said before, their throats were cut and, it, and they were stabbed multiple times. Well, next to John's body on a small table... Like they, whoever did this just left shit behind and just was like, ah, fuck it, whatever. The hammer was there that was used to bludgeon Dana. The knife was there that was used to stab and cut all three of them. And the, the, whoever did this stabbed them so many times, by the way, it was a steak knife, steak knife. It didn't break. It bent. Oh, Okay. And again, I'll, I'll post the picture. I'm doing it with my hand. So for those who are not watching, my hand is at, what is it? What kind of de- angle of degree is that? Curved. Curved. I'm making like yeah. a C shape with my hand. <laughs> but that's what the knife looked like. And they just left it there. They left the hammer, the knife. They left everything there. The empty surgical surgical uh, dispens- uh, surgical tape dispensers. Everything was just left there. And the electrical tape. And the, yep, yeah, all that. Now, like I said, uh, we are going to get to the theories now. So this is theory number one. This is what some people speculate the most that had happened. Uh, On the night, which I don't think this happened, but again, the 80s, really the late 70s and early 80s, really into the early 90s is when serial serial killers boomed. Yeah, they were at their peak. (laughs) <laughs> and just people killing in general. One night, uh, or on the night of, of the murders, while having fun, like I said, John and Dana were out having fun, and they didn't get home till late that night, probably at around 10 a.m. What PM. they found, uh, thank you, p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, what people speculate what had happened was they got a hitchhike, which kids nowadays definitely don't do. I didn't mm-hmm. do when I was growing up, and that was what the the millennial era you know 2000 but hitchhiking was a big thing back in the day like that's how that's how fucking uh texas chainsaw massacre starts off with with the guy very much very much so it was it was uh the thing to do everyone did i mean hell it was even featured in uh forrest gump yeah so wow that seltzer is it's good (laughs) <laughs> um. Oh, so they believe that they had got got a hitch, uh, a ride from someone, and whoever that person was or people were, uh, that they were the killers of the Sharp family. But nothing has ever came up, and nothing was ever brought to light. Now, okay, so the hitchhikers, the theory about the hitchhikers, they picked up the boys. They found out where he lived. Cabin. They saw that it was a single mom with a bunch of kids. Okay, if we want to rob them. But again, there's no sign of forced entry. You're right, right. So it could have been a thrill kill. It could have been a or they mistake. Knew or they knew him, which get, leads us to theory number two. Okay. And this one seems more reliable to me. Now, this is going to sound bad. But I definitely was not a part of this murder because clearly it was back in in 81 and I wasn't born until 10 years later. But Martin Smart, the stepdad of Justin Smart, uh, John's uh, buddy, or not John's buddy, uh, Greg's buddy, and his roommate, Martin Smart's roommate, John Bo Bobaday. Bobaday? Bobaday. <laughs> Who that over there? Oh, right, right there. Right, right over there. Over there, Bobaday. <laughs> <laughs> get, on, get on over there, man. Sounds like uh, what's his name, Boomhauer. Yeah. <laughs> now it said Bo was a regular criminal uh, and was pretty aggressive. 
Um, and he, you know, it's even speculated that he had quote unquote ties to organized crime back in Chicago. Mm. And Bulger. <laughs> not only that, mm-hmm. but no, that Bo, was Boston. Never mind. Bo, sorry. Bo Bobaday. Yeah. Whitey Bulger was Boston. <laughs> uh, Bo Bobaday had long hair and no facial hair. Martin Smart had short hair and a goatee. Speculation, kind of. Yeah, pretty close. Can pretty get, close, right? Yeah, he can misidentify facial hair, especially because light. Now, here's where it gets very interesting is that the night before the murders, according to a bunch of locals, and like I said before, it's a small fucking town, so if you fart weird... Tom, Dick, and Harry is, is, is going to go talk about it to, to Jamie Lynn and, 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 and Sue Ann. Everyone's going to know. Yeah. So they, everyone's at this local bar, which everyone probably being about half of the, the town or the city, mm-hmm. they, they, everyone's partying, everyone's drinking, and then in walks uh, Martin or Marty and Bo. These two fucking rednecks Walk in with three piece suits and sunglasses. Really? Ah, see. Okay. Now there's no reason for for that because there was no events going on that night. There was no proms. I don't know why they'd be at, at a prom, but there was no proms. There was no Not special church. event. No church. Nothing going on. And at this time, at, at night, it was nine o'clock at night. Okay. So, like I said, John had long hair, and at this time, his hair was slicked back. John had a, had a goatee. They're both wearing glasses, sunglasses, the night before. Now, some of the speculations came after uh, it was said that Marilyn, which is Martin's wife, consulted with Sue about leaving Martin due to domestic violence. So Marilyn was telling Sue, Marty's beating me. Marty's doing this, X, Y, and Z. I don't know what to do. Should I leave him? So I'm assuming that Marty probably didn't like that. Okay, wait a minute. Wait. You said they re- relocated from Connecticut? They relocated from Connecticut. Okay. Uh, so from Connecticut to California. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. I wouldn't imagine there's very many hitmen in Connecticut, but okay, go ahead. Never know. I mean, it's close to Boston. <laughs> yeah, but still, okay. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> Were these two guys ever noticed around town at all prior to this? Prior to the three piece suits. Prior to the prior to the the slaying. They were just known as Bo and Marty. Three-piece yep. suits. And now they're wearing three-piece suits, which they've never worn before. Or had the means to own or, one. Right. So if it was a hit, they got paid. Okay, if this is a speculation, there was a hit, they got paid, where are they now? Both have since died. Oh, well. <laughs> Rules and, out my theory. Yep. Both have <laughs> since died. And in t- uh, 2016, an anonymous counselor at the Veterans Administration in Reno, Nevada, came forward claiming that Martin had confessed to all of the killings, to all of them. Martin needed to clear his conscience. He killed Sue in the heat of passion, and he killed, and, uh, kidnapped and killed Tina, like I said, because mm-hmm. Tina was a witness, but claimed he did not kill the boys. So his buddy killed the boys? That's a possibility. Now, don't forget, John, while under hypnosis, after the entire investigation and everything else was said and done, said that two men were in the house with Sue. And now what? Now here's the other crazy part. This is what he re- remembered and what I was saving to the end, or close to the end, is that the two men looked, according to, to John, looked like they knew Sue, and Sue even went with one, the, the one with short hair, out of the house for some time, came back, and then that's when 
uh, the boy's memory kind of fades out. Okay, so he recognized them as like they had some sort of friendship, like friendship, like right? Camaraderie, like right. they knew each other, right? So were they intentionally after the daughter? And the mother got in the way, or the mother, they were after the mother, and the kids got in the way. Or so it's again, not speculated. I think I think what the speculation is, and what sounds more convincing to me, is that Sue got involved with someone's relationship as far as domestic violence. The <laughs> husband found out and was like, "Bitch, you're not going to get involved in my marriage. Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here." And then he ends up killing. Die. Her. Time to die. Kills Sue, and obviously the other guy, Bo. Hi. The other guy, <laughs> the other guy, sees the boys and is like, "Well, fuck, we can't get away with it now." Kills them, and then in the process of that, Martin, which I'm assuming Martin, sees Tina come out of her room, and then takes her. But again, like I said before, it appeared that the bodies had been moved prior, or uh, post post. To their slain. Why would they do that? I don't know. They weren't in the way. They weren't in the way. And uh, and again, and again, this goes back to no fourth century. So if they, if she did, they they take advantage of the mother when she was dead. According, well, I mean, I doubt rape kits then were even. I don't even know when rape kits came came about, but I doubt that they were effective because they barely even use them now. Are they oh. barely even like effective now or, or uh, from what I hear? So ladies, people don't quote <laughs> me on that. Sorry. I'm not, I'm not a professional. Clearly. We're oh, not that educated. And I'm drinking a <laughs> seltzer. Ooh, macho. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Now, so the little girl interfered in something that was happening. The boys were a whip or aware of what was going on. So they had to take, kill the boys on top of the mother. Mm -hmm. So instead of leaving the girl, all of it sounds like it was Uh, not necessary. Think it was a setup. Maybe not a setup, but like definitely premeditated at least to kill the mom. Cause she had the most damage. What? Okay. Most damage. I understand the act, the, the act of, but also, 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 don't forget, the other kid that died, not John, not John Sharp. Just the friend. The friend, Dana, uh, Dana, when, Dana, uh, fuck, I'm forgetting his name already. Dana's good. Yeah, Dana. Dana Wingate. But don't forget, the, the son-in-law, Step-dad. or stepson, yeah. was in the room too. He was in that back room sleeping. Justin Smart. Well, that's I I understand that. That's what I'm saying. None of it make if the boys didn't wake up. Okay, the boys didn't wake up. They killed the mom. They did whatever they did to her. Why? Why disturb the boys? And then when the girl woke up, they obviously kidnapped her. Probably did whatever they wanted. I think, and they killed her. I think. I think either the boys like because like I said, they got home late. So now I'm thinking, what if they were already in the house prior to the boys getting there? Because don't forget, like I said, they got home late. They get home. Martin is there threatening Sue, like, you know, stay the fuck out of my relationship. I'll fucking kill you. I'll do whatever. Her oldest son is then, is then like, the fuck, you're not going to touch my mom? Goes after them. So what, what if that happened? I don't see that happening either, dude. I wrote I re- this don't. And this is all documented, by the way. Everyone can find this. This is definitely, this is on YouTube. This is on uh, Cron 4, uh, LA Times. Uh, these are all my sources. And definitely <laughs> Wik- Wikipedia. The truth. That is the only truth. <laughs> so deal with that as, as you may. Oh. Uh. But still, like I said, it doesn't make sense to do what they did for any other reason other than I don't see a hit. I don't see these two hillbillies being hit. Hit men. Uh, sir, they were rednecks. All right, all right. Please uh, please refer to okay. them as their proper name. They have an IQ. <laughs> or that lack of. 
<laughs> now, both were the primary suspects of this whole thing too. Because they knew Sue, the son was in in the, the house at that time, and obviously Bo had a criminal record. Or or had quote unquote ties to organized crime. So with that being said, they were the prime suspects. They were booked in and then uh, brought into the sheriff's department where they took a lie detector test. Right. Both of them passed. What? And like I said, this place was corrupt back in the 80s. And here's a, here's a, a, a little tidbit. The sheriff knew Martin Smart. The sheriff also, hold on, the sheriff also was involved in Martin and Marilyn's marriage. He was their quote unquote counselor. <laughs> so he knew the dirt on all of it. Oh, of course. He knew everything. He knew everyone and everything. Okay, I'm waiting for their, what is an insurance scam? What did he get out of it? Nothing. Like I said, he, they both died. And and the sheriff never got anything out of it. The sheriff never, from what I've read on or uh, read about, never got a payout, never got anything. He just knew the guy. But covered it up. There's what did he have on it? Wow. Okay. This just leaves a lot of questions. I mean, it it's all it too That's simple. all it is. Sounds yeah. too simple of a crime. To have so many fucking Holes spider webs and webs yeah. everywhere. And like I said, to this day, this murder is still unsolved. It's okay, when was the last time anybody looked into it? Any sort of PI or criminal In investigator? 2018. Uh-huh. DNA evidence was analyzed from a piece of white surgical tape found near Sue's body. According to the Plumas County Special Investigator Mike Gamberg, the DNA matches a living suspect. The DNA has been in evidence for over several years, but hasn't been tested until recently. However, no, re no arrests and no names have been made public as of yet. But they have an idea. So the person is still alive. A person. So why can't is, they pursue what's again, the whole I've been of probable this. cause? I've been researching this one for the last three months, and still nothing has came up. Really? Yep. Cabin 28. The Keedy Murders. The resort is yeah. now a, a derelict ghost town, and visitors only come to see the infamous Cabin 28, but... It was demolished in 2004. So now you just have the lot. And the ghost. And the ghosts. That's kind of, that's kind of twisted, dude. T took advantage of the kids. It's a good story though, right? I mean. No, you know, no, no. I get it. Yeah. I just, it's a horrible story. I mean, yeah. It's terrible. The girl, I mean, just to kill, just to kill the one girl who was cheating or people was part of a cheat. Not like that, dude. Especially the one who got drug off yeah. 20 miles Tina? away, and then they found her three years later. Three years later, 1984. And not even like finding like something like uh, it's probably gross for the people on YouTube watching. Sorry, scratching my ear. The inside of my smell brain. It. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not the best. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. It's really crazy. And this is just a side note, but there's more people that get lost and go missing in our national forests every day than there's more people being bit by sharks. That's why I don't go anymore. I lose my sense of direction. What do you mean you're going <laughs> to lose your sense of direction? You have survival shit all, all over your house. Yeah. But once I once I lose my sense of direction, like I could stand some in, in a direction and know on my compass that 
200 degrees northwest would be the exit of this trail but if i get turned around just by a little bit I, i'll i won't be my my mentals will be shot <laughs> they would be that's why i don't go into i don't go into those long big long hiking paths anymore so i'm use. assuming i'm assuming that uh when blair witch project came out that kind of tugged on a string for you no nah, i was good i was good up to all that i think the anesthesia fuck, uh, just screwed my brain i mean oh, i don't from when you had heart surgery? surgeries yeah because i was never claustrophobic and i would always i could be able to tell you where all my directions were just by looking you know sun up sun down shadow shade moss certain vegetation now if i don't see a sign within 20 feet of each other i start to panic <laughs> <laughs> i can see you wandering wandering around a fucking garage uh, a parking garage help help <laughs> yeah, i'm lost <laughs> <laughs> sir can it's we happened, help you dude. It's happened when we first moved back here the at Lake Chabot, and this was a totally paved area, blacktop and everything. And when I was in high school and I used to go there, that it was an existing trail. When we moved back, all they did was just cut into the path, which would have been south of this trail, and then did just a loop, just a big loop, and it basically veered off in two different directions, but they came out of the same area. It's well noted, well paths, has directionals and everything. Well, there was one part right in the middle. It was might as well have been like a four-way patch of dirt. And I just got like extremely dizzy and I sat. <laughs> I sat. I don't I mean like, to laugh. What the it was funny. I think about it now because it took me about 15 minutes. I laid there for a while. Literally. Laid I laid down. Yeah. I was dizzy, dude. Like I, I had to get my bearings back. So when I stood up, I realized that the water was to the north of me, which was straight ahead because I was laying with my feet toward the water. Then I realized, oh, the blacktop is down there. So I just walked back. But until then, yeah, everything, uh, yeah, it was like I got shook in a big old ball of fucking, like a snow globe, and I just lost my direction. Jesus. Yeah, and I and I still lose my direction to today. Damn. Yep. Well, you better own a can. You have a phone, so you better own a phone. A, a phone. Oh no, I do. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm working on getting it. A uh, wrist held GPS, but those are like five hundred bucks, but worth it. Jesus. Especially if you, GPS. I said Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or nowadays you can get a sat phone. You know, yeah. a resident. Yeah, you can get those. Phone. So. I'm working on it, you know. As long as I, I mean, I as long as I stay in a pattern, and if I see somebody, then I'll feel comfortable. But if I don't see anybody for a while, I'll start to panic. Did you see another old guy? How long have you, have you been wandering around? I've been here for 25 years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, your ass is dying before me. And well, it don't help when wild animals jump out in the path, like a deer or fucking a raccoon ah. or a fucking a, a squirrel or a snow a squirrel. squirrel. A you got scared of a squirrel. I have before. I have before. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention, and the shit just started rapping. Actually, know. you know what? I can't even hate on that. When I was uh, I was coming home, I was walking to my car from – my from my my day job and you know i i get off late nights mm -hmm. well there's jackrabbits that run around yeah where my yeah. job is at there you go all i heard i was looking at a song to pick before i hit play and i hear yeah i there hear that go. but here's the part the fucked up part Whatever that was, I hear, and right as I turn to my right, it fucking took my leg out, and I went into the air. Two, I think it was two of them, but one of them hit me right in my fucking ankle, brought my leg up, like, all the way up. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Scare, I, I don't even know if it was a, a yell. It was more of like a, oh, kind of thing. 
<laughs> it was weird. Although made you want made you want to throw up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It scared the shit out yeah. of me. But I think yeah, to, okay. to this make day, fun of me, asshole. To, hey, you can make fun of me for for this one because I still make fun of myself. <laughs> to this day, the worst I've ever been scared walking home. And this is when I was doing jujitsu over by by the old house in San, in San, San Lorenzo. It was late at night, and iPod touches had just came out, and the screen was all the way up. The brightness was all the way up. So I'm going through my phone, and as I'm turning a corner, I think I, I think you re, re, remember the story. I turn the corner, and I bump into something, but it's at it's at my mid thigh. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I, and again, the screen is in my face like this. And I turn, I, my right hand reaches down and all I feel is fur. And I'm thinking it's a big ass fucking dog. And I just yell and then I turn my screen. It's a fucking couch. Someone with a couch in the middle of the fucking sidewalk. <laughs> God, we're two sappy motherfuckers, squirrels and couches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're you're squared of living creatures. I'm an <laughs> inhabitant <in> object. <laughs> oh my god! Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Keedy murders and our fucking ridiculous stories of being scared shitless. Two city boys. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a good story. I like that. Story, how'd you right? come? Up, how'd you figure that one out? Uh, honestly, when I was researching the Gypsy Hill murders, it kind of sounds some familiar or around the same time. Yeah. So I found, uh, it was two, it was, there's three things. Actually, there's one more that I want to get into because, uh, uh, recently a killer of a very well-known, well, in the South Bay, well-known murder, uh, I believe is being released after like 40 years. Released as in he served his time. He served his time. Whoa. If I'm not mistaken. And again, I have to look into it, but I just saw the the headline as of recently, but I will look into it and we will talk about it again. Okay. Yeah. That was the key murders. Uh, I found it when I was looking at the gypsy hill murders. And I, and like I said, I've been working on this one for a few, a few months. Yeah, I like it. I like this. It, it was a good one, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. As always, please be sure to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Also, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, comment our information or whatever, or comment below in the, in the description uh, about what you think of this episode. And we will have some more oh. intro. <laughs> Interesting guests to come. Sorry, it's the <laughs> seltzer. Thanks, Trader Joe. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for for listening. Like I said, and uh, have a, have a good evening. Good night, all. Peace.